Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen at this time, so that we may bring you the following WFAA special presentation. Hello again, everyone. I'm Joe Trahan, and welcome to the American Heart Association's 2019 Heart Walk to build healthier communities across North Texas. Right now, we're in the opening ceremonies. As you can hear, the anthem going on behind us. Um, of course, we respect the anthem, uh, but we've got a lot to get to, so we're going to keep going with the show. But just for a second, let's take a moment uh, to listen to the anthem and get us in the right frame of mind. We're so gallantly streaming. That is how you get us in the right frame of mind to get us going for this year's Heart Walk. Hey, joining me now is WFAA Health and Wellness reporter Sonia Azad. Sonia, here we go. Great morning, great way to start it. It is a beautiful morning, Joe. I'm so happy to be here again with you and all these great folks for the Heart Walk. It is a really energized crowd. They are on fire this morning. And that's the great thing, right? There's a great energy. The crowd is so big. I mean, we're expecting about 60,000 people. The Dallas Heart Walk is the nation's largest event of its kind. These walks are held annually in more than 300 communities across America. And, of course, we're pleased to be with you live right here in downtown Dallas. And here's the deal. If you're close by, you still have time to come down and join us. The walk kicks off in about 30 minutes. Uh, if you can't get here, there is another way that you can help. You can text the word HEART to 52000 and automatically donate $5 on your wireless bill. And the money raised today is going to help people right here in North Texas to live longer and healthier lives. Take a look at this. Uh, last year alone, the American Heart Association contributed over $7 million to North Texas research hospitals, funding more heart and stroke research than any organization outside of the federal government. Also, the AHA works directly with schools, encouraging the next generation to be healthier, which is exciting to me, uh, and uh, reaching over, well over, I should say, 700,000 North Texas students. That's a huge number. Also, 286,000 adults and teens have been trained in CPR, AED usage, and just basic life-saving skills. Yeah, there's so much great work going on, and uh, we got a lot of great people here because Reunion Park is absolutely packed, but there's also another heart walk that's going on in Fort Worth at the Will Rogers Memorial Center. Let's check in with our Hannah Davis, who's in the thick of things there. Good morning, Hannah. Hey, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Sonia. You know there's always that Dallas-Fort Worth rivalry, and we're going to keep it going this morning. I think the crowd out here is beating the crowd out in Dallas this morning. Absolutely fantastic. We see walkers. We see families out here, individuals, couples, and a lot of people bringing their four-legged friends. So I had to get in on the fun. I brought my boy Tobias out this morning supporting the Heart Association and Heart Health. But, you know, what's really cool about this also is people are learning specific skills that they can take. Oh, you saw another dog. And learn and help save lives. Take a look over here. This is the hands-only demonstration center for CPR. Folks are learning how to do this, and this can save a life. But more than anything, guys, today I wanted to show you this family right here. This is Team Benjamin. And more than anything, this is why we're here today. Take a look at them. Benjamin is a strong little man. He's been dealing with heart issues since he's been born. And his family has learned so much through this. And they want to take his story and teach other people what to look out for, what to be aware, and how to be an advocate for your children child. Thank you guys for being here this morning. And Benjamin, I love your sunglasses, sir. This is just the start. We're going to send it back to you guys. It's so much fun this morning here in Fort Worth. 
Yeah, thanks so much, Hannah. My man, Benjamin, he's ready to roll. He's good to go. And, you know, it's no surprise that this event grows annually. One of the big shifts over the past year within the American Heart Association involved a change in their way of thinking. While the AHA remains dedicated to ending heart disease and stroke, they've added a new dimension by taking a holistic approach to overall health and well-being. Physically and mentally, Sonia, you know, you've been highlighting some of the ways to improve your health in these past few weeks. And uh, I've seen some of those morning news segments. They're great stuff. Yeah, I mean, if, if you've been watching Wellness Wednesdays, that's, uh, that's what we've been talking about for a long time. Uh, taking a look at what the AHA calls Life's Simple 7. Uh, and those are the seven risk factors that people can improve through just lifestyle changes, you guys. So the goal is to help to achieve not only ideal cardiovascular health, but really overall health and well-being. So we're talking about managing your blood pressure, controlling cholesterol, reducing blood sugar, eating better, losing weight, stopping smoking, and also getting more active. This month at both Heart Walks, attendees are gonna be able to see and experience these seven elements really come to life in interactive mission zones. So it's everything from checking your blood pressure to playing games that sort of explain ways to live an overall healthier life. You know, I'm doing okay, Sonia. I got about five of the seven. I'm still working. All right. You know, we're I'm gonna, working on it. We got one year. So next year when we're sitting here, I'm going to expect seven of seven. All right. All right. Okay. No, perfect seven. Challenge right? accepted. I like it. I like <laughs> it. And, you know, taking those small steps every day because you never know how those steps could save your life or the life of someone you love. And here's a story of one gentleman whose dedication to physical activity saved his life. Oh, I'm Angelo Keys. I'm a entrepreneur, small business owner here in the Dallas area. I spent my whole life in health and fitness. Um, I was in the gym all the time. I ate right. Uh, that's why it wasn't just a shock to me, but others around me, they're like, wow, if he can go down, you know, what about me? The first heart attack I had was in 2014 and uh, I ended up having a triple bypass. Uh, that's something that, that happened while I was in the gym working out. Initially my vital signs were not showing that I was having a heart attack. Then finally blood tests came back, the doctor said you need to have emergency surgery now. So I had uh, probably 80% blockage in one of my arteries, 60 in another and 50 in another. Some people were like, Look, all that working out did absolutely no good, but my doctor said that the shape I was in is what saved my life and gave me that, that fighting chance. What they subsequently found out is that it was a genetic issue where my body produces more of the bad cholesterol. You can be fit on the outside, but what about the inside? I used to be concerned with health and fitness, but now I'm more concerned with health and wellness. I walk because I want to make the most out of my second chance. Now uh, we want to uh, go to Sonia right now, who is uh, with Angelo Keys to talk more about his incredible story. Sonia? Yeah, uh, Joe, and it really is incredible. Angelo, we just heard your story. You're here getting warmed up for the walk, but look, you said you ate well, you exercised, yes. seemingly you did all the right things, right? So what did doctors say? Why did this happen? Well, after my uh, open heart surgery and subsequent two other heart attacks, they discovered I had a genetic predisposition for the blockages in my heart. But they also said that if I was not in the shape I was in, the condition I was in, that I would not have survived. Yeah, and certainly not recovered as well as you exactly. did and healed. Right. So uh, you, you look like you work out. I'm just taking a guess. Yeah, yeah. He, de he definitely works <laughs> a out. Little bit, a little, little bit. bit. What are your favorite exercises? What do you do? My foundation is weightlifting, but I call it functional fitness because it enhances the other things I do as far as sports and athletics. As you saw in the video, I do boxing fitness, so it helps me with that, as well as another form of martial arts. Uh, that's a good range yeah. because you're moving your body in a lot of different ways, textures I like to say. So what does overall health and wellness really mean to you? It means a balanced, healthy lifestyle. Uh, not only the fitness aspect, but your nutrition, as well as um, your mind, you know, getting enough rest and reducing the amount of stress in your life and just remembering to be happy. 
And I know that that sounds like a lot for people at home. You're like, how do I reduce the amount of stress and eat well and exercise? But really, you just got to throw yourself into it. And over time, you develop sort of a rhythm for yourself, right? Yes, yes. Again, it becomes a lifestyle. And you get into those habits, those healthy habits, and it becomes easier once you do that. Angelo, thank you for inspiring us today to get heart healthy. And we appreciate you being here and walking. I really appreciate it. I'm honored to be a part of this. And thank you. All right, Joe, back over to you. Yeah, healthy habits. Just get into that routine. It helps so much. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in America and around the world. In fact, every 40 seconds, someone will have a heart attack. That's why the Heart Walk is so critical, because it raises awareness and funds across the nation. Did you know that 80% of cardiac events are preventable with healthy lifestyle changes? The AHA does so much more than raise funds for research. They have become one of the leading organizations in the charge for healthy living. For those of you watching at home, remember that you can text HEART to 52000 to make a contribution that can save a life. Also, this event would not happen without the generos generosity, that is, of each of the walk sponsors. So thank you to all of those who make today possible. It takes little changes to live a healthier life. Well, up next, we hear from a mother who is out to make sure that her and her daughters don't become another heart disease statistic. Well, I got to tell you what, you guys, the energy, you can feel it. They're doing the wobble right now. They're having a blast out there. It's palpable. You can feel that great energy here. It's just hopping all around us. People having a great time, dancing, getting their heart rates up. And uh, now we'd like to go back to Hannah in Fort Worth for more. Hannah? Hey guys, I'm out here in Fort Worth with Cami, Executive Director of Tarrant County. What do you think about this turnout this morning? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. We have so many people here. It is just amazing. And you know, they are all learning about heart health, how they can eat healthy and lose weight and get physically active and control their high blood pressure and control cholesterol. But you know, there are a lot of people that are not here today yeah. who don't even know where their next meal is going to come from. And they don't know, they don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables in their community. And we've got to attack that too. We've got to really make a difference on both fronts. Helping people prevent and then helping people have access. What are some of the things you're doing out here in Tarrant County to attack that problem? It's not an easy problem, right? What are you guys able to do? Oh my gosh, so we are collaborating with a lot of organizations around community gardens. Community gardens allow people to start planting seeds in, in lots that are vacant in their neighborhood mm -hmm. and they plant some seeds, grow them, and then they can sell that fresh fruits and vegetables to people who are in the community who need them. I love that. And you, there was one other thing that you guys were talking about. It's this phrase, and some, we hear a lot of phrases, guys. Uh -huh. It was the idea that a single spark can light a flame. That's oh, something that's yes. going on out here. What is that idea? And how I, I see a flame out here. How, how are we seeing this come to life? There is a flame out here. And so here's what that means. Everyone here can make simple changes every day in their life. Mm. And that is a spark. That is a spark, and that helps to inspire their, their loved ones that live in their house with them or their colleagues that they work with every day. That inspires other, others. And if we can get enough people to make that change, to have that spark, then they can light a flame. And enough people, enough flames are lit, then we are igniting the torch of the American Heart Association. Cammie, I love that. I love that. And when we saw folks like Team Benjamin out here, it's like that's the reason why we're here, seeing that's that whole why. family coming together. Yes, that's why. Thank you so much for talking oh, to me. Thank you so Successful much. event. We're so happy to be here. We oh, plan on being here you. next year I'm as well. I'm so glad to hear that. That's great. And you know, thank everybody you. out here is walking for a different reason. Yeah. We talked to a lot of them beforehand to hear the special stories. We've got another special story lined up for you. Take a look at this Why I Walk. Bob Jane, I'm a dentist in Fort Worth in an office called Seven Day Dental, and we've been here for 10 years. I work here every single day, seven days a week. I was in the middle of seeing a patient. Uh, all of a sudden, whatever I was trying to say to, to, to the patient, to my coworkers, did not make any sense anymore, and uh, I used my feet to kick the wall, but I didn't feel anything. My coworker called ambulance and took me to one of the hospitals in Fort Worth. 
and sure enough, I was having a major stroke. Before the stroke, I would have fast food. It was for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three times a day for years. I had two minor strokes before the major stroke. I just ignored my, the warning signs my body was giving to me. After the stroke, I changed my diet. Nowadays, it's completely uh, fruit and vegetable and nuts and fish. No more carbs and uh, no more candy, no more sugar. And I started exercising as well. I have a rowing machine at home. I also have a treadmill at home. I use those almost every day. I walk because I want to see my daughters graduate from high school. They're the main thing in my life. And I love them very much. My wife, I want to take care of them. I don't want anything to happen to me again. That's why I walk. All these stories are so powerful and so impactful. And we've got another one here from a mom who is out to make sure that she and her daughters don't become another heart disease statistic. My name is Karen Thornton. The first time I got involved with the American Heart Association, I attended the Go Red for Women's Lunch in Fort Worth. After that luncheon, um, I decided to volunteer with the organization because once you hear the mission, you hear what they're trying to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis, it's hard not to get involved. During that luncheon, I learned that one in three women will die from cardiovascular-related diseases and stroke. And I thought to myself, I have two young daughters at home. That's not a statistic that I can just ignore or live with going forward. There's, there's got to be a solution. There's got to be a way that we can change those numbers. Um, so I started volunteering. I had some fairly unhealthy habits. We're still working on some of those habits, but as an example, you know, I drank about a six pack of Coke a day. Since being involved with the Heart Association, getting rid of sugar out of our diet, particularly sodas, has been a major accomplishment for our family. There are some day-to-day -day changes that you can make, and there are some things that we have successfully done as a family, but just having a conversation with people in ways that we have not done before, having conversations with each other, I think has probably been the biggest benefit. Not only is it easy to engage in the conversation, but there's a natural flow and a desire to be a part of the movement that fixes the whole problem. I walk because I want to lead my family by example. I don't want them to just hear me talking about things. I want them to see me doing things. And I want my daughters to know if their mother can get out and walk and make a difference for herself, then they can do the same. As we just saw in the video, eating healthy has so many different benefits. Join me in welcoming award-winning chef Richard Chamberlain of Chamberlain's Steak and Chop House, the Fish Market Grill. He knows a thing or two about heart health. In fact, eating healthy does not mean a lack of flavor or creative flair. Isn't that right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, today I picked uh, halibut as, as a really, really healthy way to start this meal. Yes. Uh, we're looking for really bright flavors to pair with that halibut. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got started here some chicken stock, uh, some light coconut milk, and then we're gonna finish that with some fresh ginger. Okay. And then a little bit of spice. This is uh, red coconut, a red curry paste, and a little goes a long way. Yes, it does. It can get really spicy. Yep. Some green onions. Okay. And then a little chili pepper here. I love throwing in some fresh herbs, this cilantro, and then I have some basil right out of my garden mm -hmm. that's just perfect right now. You, so can, you can smell it. I mean, that's a really nice aroma. <clears throat> and then for vegetables, I've got roasted red peppers, uh, some bamboo shoots, mm. and then these beautiful uh, French green beans that have just been lightly blanched in some salted water. Perfect. And really, these, all this just warms up in the, in the sauce. It already has a beautiful flavor. You and don't then, really need much salt then because you've got all of these flavors going, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and the curry paste actually has a fair amount of salt in it also, so really you don't need any. Uh, the halibut gets poached in this uh, coconut curry broth just really, really quickly for just a, a couple of minutes. And then every good sauce like this needs a little fresh lime. There you go. That's going to add a nice juicy flavor. It has such a lightness to it. And then also, I like to do the, the of course, the juice and then some of the zest mm -hmm. really kind of blow up that lime taste. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> blow it up. I like that. And for those who don't know, halibut is a nice light 
fish. Oh, it is so light and delicious. Yeah, so, and it'll really absorb all these flavors. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll let that help it just cook, and then I've, I've got some already cooked here, and what we're going to do is just top this with those beautiful green beans. How long would you let that cook for? So the halibut only cooks for about three minutes. Okay. It's really fast. Very it's quick. just on a little light simmer. Okay. And then and there uh, it is. Yes and I love to pair a little brown rice with it. Oh who doesn't love a little brown rice on top. Mm -hmm. All right chef thank you so much. That looks fantastic. I'm gonna dig in in just a moment. Please. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah, who doesn't like a little brown rice? Hey, can I say something? Seriously. Yes. Thank you for those cooking segments because it's those small things when you can actually see them in action so you can put them into action. Yeah. It makes a difference, so thank you. I mean, honestly, it is delicious. And when he said you only cook that fish for three minutes, it's fast. Right. Fast and easy, okay? So we have been talking about small ways to improve your lifestyle changes, shifting, right? Uh, such as moving more, eating better. But what if you live in an area that doesn't have access to healthy food? Well, WFAA and the American Heart Association have been working together to spotlight the dire need for healthy food options throughout North Texas communities. We've been telling stories of a lot of dedicated people in South Dallas and their inspirational efforts to bring healthy food to the area. Thank you, Mom Crew. In another part of Dallas, what some might call the other side of the tracks, this would not pass for a grocery store, but in this neighborhood, in this zip code, 75216, it's much easier to buy beer than bananas. No, growing up, there were no healthy options, unless your healthiest option was probably going to be your school cafeteria. Not even a subway. <laughs> not even a subway in this neighborhood. Unisha Wells would know. Hey, good morning. How you doing? She was born in 75216 and raised here. <laughs> yep. By her grandparents. As you can see, they still have my high school pictures up. Her grandmother died. They say they like my shade tree. But grandfather Raymond Cunningham is 79 and still lives South Denley Drive in the same home. 75216. So I would just be out here a lot by myself, reading, maybe listening to music, singing. Unisha is now 39. Uh, yeah, this was my spot. And she has an adult's perspective on all the obstacles she faced as a kid, which her family and friends still face, trying to live a healthy life. Life expectancy in 75216 is comparable to some third world countries. Cars are expensive, so Unisha walked or rode a bus to shop and carried groceries home. And restaurants? There are a lot of them, but not a lot of them are healthy. Everybody wants a Whole Foods or um, a Eatsies or something like that. So in this neighborhood, you're not going to find that. It is definitely a food desert. You're going to get uh, fried foods. You're going to get barbecue. You're going to get things like that. Even access to parks and nice walking trails. There is definitely a class system between the have and the have nots. But to be honest with you, um, my grandparents instilled so much value in me that I was about 15 to 16 years old when I realized that I was a have not. Unisha was the first in her family to graduate high school. Then she graduated college. A former teacher and current community volunteer in 75216, she's frustrated that a zip code determines wealth and health. Hey! How are you today? Good, how are you? I feel a little better. Good to see you. There is plenty of good going on here, and that will lead to change. Remember, when the vowel is short, you do not hear it, but when it's long, you hear it. Like more than 35% of the people in this zip code. In the word eat, eat. you hear the letter E. Eat. Glenda Davis battles high blood pressure, which led to a stroke. Dot. Stunt. Unisha is teaching her reading Stunt. and math. She's a product of this neighborhood as well, and anything that is done with her is, is going to strengthen 75216. They're at Four Oak Cliff. That's one of the nonprofits the American Heart Association chose to work with to increase food options and education to make 75216 a healthier place to live. I can't believe you remember that. <laughs> Roots and pride run deep here. Yeah. But it's time to respect that past. We're going to do the work in 75216. And build. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the other place, okay? A better future. All right. In Dallas. Love you. See you later. I'm Teresa Woodard. All right. Love you too.
Interesting story there. And you know, right here in our own backyard, there are people who struggle with getting healthy food. And the AHA is working with other organizations across North Texas to help change that. So joining us now is President of Operations for AT&T and American Heart Association Dallas Division Board member Scott Mayer. Scott, thanks so much for being here with us this morning. Thank you for having me. And tell me, what did you think about the video we just showed the people at home? Well, it's, it's actually spot on because there's a lot of places where people don't have access to healthy food. And that's what we've been focused on. Really, what are the social causes of health? And so the, as a result of that work, we've identified a number of areas here in Dallas that really need to change. There's things that need to change in order to provide healthier food and access to food. So we've been focused on what we can do for the residents of 75216, the zip code, uh, and uh, make sure that they have access to what they need to be healthy. And we want to make sure that we can engage in a very uh, thoughtful uh, and realistic way to make a difference. Well, what are the areas of focus? And can we gain some ground when it comes to these areas that are so-called food deserts? I've driven around them, and really, there, there isn't much. Yeah, and in terms of we've been working with grocery stores and things to, uh, and organizations to say it makes a difference. If you want to make a difference in a community, come join us and provide uh, that type of healthy food. But there's other things that we've been doing as well. One is we call those the food deserts, but we're also working on things like e-cigarettes, right? And if you follow any of the media, that presents a lot of risk to kids in our community. And so we want to address in a very thoughtful uh, but, but uh, serious way around on this health, uh, the health risks of uh, e-cigarettes, and also make sure that we're educating people on those risks. Just like the AHA has done for decades, the risks associated with cigarette smoking, there's risks associated with e-cigarettes, and again, that's about um, you know, heart health and uh, healthy living. Well, we appreciate all that you do, all that AT&T does. Also, your work with the board, Scott. It's important work, and uh, you guys have certainly been doing a great job with it. And that is a wonderful example of how large companies around DFW can impact the communities they serve. So, Scott, thank you so much for the time and the effort. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, we're going to have a great day today. Yes, Perfect we day. are. We are really gearing up here. Remember, you still have time to text heart to 52000 that donates five dollars automatically your contribution really collectively can help to save someone's life you guys now we want to thank all of our guests this morning uh, for talking about how heart disease has impacted their lives this is a disease that affects everyone sonia and i both have personal experiences my father passed away from a heart attack and i know uh, you've had issues in your family as well yeah heart disease runs in my family and my mom's side of the family specifically high cholesterol high blood pressure type 2 diabetes. We're fighting it though. We're going to keep fighting it. Hard work in Dallas and Fort Worth. They're set off to kick off in just a few seconds. Denton will have their heart walk at C.H. Collins Athletic Complex next week. Hey, if you have questions about heart disease, stroke, or want a healthy lifestyle change, visit heart.org. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone.